The title of this wow this week is called No Idea Means I Have One. Now, I don't know about you, but I've certainly been in a situation where I've asked a colleague about a problem or a person or a situation only to have them say to me, I have no idea, with an evasive shrug. And what I've realized, as I'm sure you have too, that this usually doesn't mean they have no idea. It means they can't be bothered to tell me, they don't want to tell me, they're too nervous to tell me. Okay, this is an invitation to which you would really like to RSVP. So how can you get these idea-free people to talk to you? Um, one of the first things uh, that's very helpful to do, and I learned this when I was teaching three-year-olds who knew that being a nursery school teacher would be so helpful, is um, you want to try to keep a sense of humor about the whole thing. Uh, and this doesn't mean you treat a serious situation as less serious than it might be, but it just means you need to keep your tone of voice light and your body a little bit relaxed. Because the same way your kid is not going to tell you what they've done wrong if they think they're going to get into trouble, your colleagues are not going to tell you what's going on if they think they're going to get into trouble or they're going to get somebody else into trouble. So if you can actually muster up a tone of genuine inquiry when you ask, that's even better. Another uh, great technique is to give people something to say that it's not. Remember the old warmer, colder game? So, for example, if your colleague is not in a meeting or is late for a meeting, you can say, you know, do you think that he's had, a, he's stuck at lunch? Do you think that he's had a family emergency? Do you give people choices because very often they'll say, well, no, it's not that, which might usually can get them to say, but it is this. Okay, warmer, colder works very well for that one. I also recommend giving people the because behind why you're asking. Um, you know, if for instance, a team member hands you a report and it doesn't have statistics that were supposed to be included, and you say, you know, can you tell me why so-and-so did inclu include the statistics because if he's having trouble getting them, I'm happy to put my assistant on it. That's going to get you a lot further than, can you tell me why the statistics aren't included? Okay, that makes everybody feel tense. If you get the sense that the person you're talking to needs to check in with someone else on the team before they speak to you about it, it's great to say to them, I understand if you want to talk to X before you speak to me, um, please let him or her know that my goal is not to point fingers, my goal is just to resolve the situation. Okay, FYI, this means that when you are told what's going on, you can't point fingers. If you do, you're never going to get told anything again. Finally, you want to give people a framework for following up with you. You can say to them, you know what, I would appreciate either having you or having another team member, whoever it is, follow up with me by the end of business today, I'll be in my office. My request is that you handle this type of thing in person, not via email. Again, email is not for problem solving. You might as well get out gasoline in a match. If you can't handle it in person, my request is that you handle it by telephone. I hope these tips are helpful the next time you encounter somebody who seemingly has no idea.